Hi, Space Monkeys. So we are back from E3. We wanted to share with you that uh, demonstration, which is um, a mix between a technological demonstration of the G engine that we call Voyager and uh, the actual game with some gameplay elements. So here you can recognize the big mothership that was in the, in the trailer. Uh, of course, it's not the same level of quality. This is a work in progress asset. But again, we wanted to share all these um, this materials with you. As you know, the game is in development. Uh, we still have a lot of things to do, but it's, it's cool to share with you where you, you, we are on that, that um, spaceship part. So here, you, the mothership is uh, it's like a home, a house for the player. That one is about 400 meters long. And you can have your crew inside, of course, your main character, but also your spaceships. So if you, if you start in the game without anything and you get your first spaceships, even if then later you have a larger spaceship, you can keep the smaller one into the big mother mothership. That's the same thing for the crew. If you start with one or two members in your crew, uh, then you can have them in your big mothership later. Uh, that gameplay mechanic of uh, what we call the, uh, you know, the Russian dolls, so bigger, smaller into the bigger, and then your characters, is very close to what we um, had, in fact, in Beyond Good and Evil 1, when the characters were getting out of the, the overcraft. So here we have uh, that monkey, which is my playable main character here, but of course, you, in that game, in that... Um, you can select your character and create your own character. Uh, just to give you a feeling of scale, that ship is about 20 meters long, and the other one, the mother ship, is about 400 meters long. I'm going to go close to it so that you can see the size. So when we have large spaceships like that, the good thing, the interesting thing is that they are, they are um, a real level of gameplay. You can go inside, you are, we have interiors for, the, for those big um, ingredients. So imagine I'm at the beginning of the game, I'm starting the game, I have nothing, but I am like, uh, you know, like in Beyond Good and Evil 1, you start uh, without anything, and you have to get some money to like level up and get, uh, get um, your first vehicles. So imagine I'm just delivering pizzas here, it's like a side quest or just a way among many to, to get some money. I'm delivering pizzas to those, uh, those guys, so imagine it's not my spaceship, that's the beginning of the game. And this could um, be an interesting way to trigger um, the first ingredients of the adventure. Because the spaceship is um, a playable interior, you can get inside, you can sell your pizza, and then instead of getting out of the ship, you could decide to explore the ship. And, uh, why not discover that there is some slavery, some uh, human trafficking, and things like that. The good thing is that in Beyond Good and Evil 2, uh, like in the, one, the first episode, you can uh, take pictures. So if, if I'm taking a picture of um, uh, evidence of the things I'm seeing in the game, then I can share those pictures with uh, the guys in the city, for example, and then we can trigger, I can trigger discussions uh, with those guys based on the picture I, I took. So that's a very interesting mechanic that, that, that can create that feeling that uh, you can explore everything and you can gather information and share those information with NPCs, but also between players. Another very interesting thing here is the feeling of scale. Here we know that the players, they, they will explore everything. They will want to go everywhere. So we need to handle large scale um, um, ingredients, uh, like, like that huge statue where you can go very close to it and you can uh, look at all the details on the statues and of course you can go inside of that this kind of statue and you can also get on top of it. I just want to show you something interesting about the scale and the feeling of scale. So I'm going to land on the top of the statue and you will realize how big it is. So here we have a wonderful vista and I want to show you, so I'm going to go more in the developer edition mode where I can move the, the camera very easily and you can really notice and understand the, the, the feeling of scale when you look at that little monkey on top of the big statue. This is just a part of the head of the statue and you're already very small. 
And it's very interesting to understand the scale of things. Here you see that the statue is really, really big. It's, the statue is about 700 meters high. And the very interesting thing, again, is that, in fact, that statue, which is big, is uh, just into a big city that is very small, in fact, compared to the continent here, the size of that uh, big island, and which is a small part of a big planet. So you realize that uh, you are just a little dot on that big planet, which is, in fact, just a small planet around a bigger one, which is a small dot in the big universe. So when we started that technology, we thought that we needed to uh, handle that feeling of scale and uh, in a realistic way. Before uh, going into details, uh, we wanted to make sure that the, the engine was uh, capable of handling this kind of thing. When you look at this sunset, it's not exactly a sunset made by, uh, made by artists. It's really the combinations of uh, physical uh, ingredients, you know, the light, that is changing depending on the atmosphere. So you can see here the different colors. And the fact that, of course, the planet is rotating around in space, around the big planet. So here I'm doing a kind of time lapse. I'm modifying the, the time so that you can understand better how it works. You see that everything is turning like in, you know, in a real solar system. So yes, I'm increasing the speed. You see the night here with the cities. So another important uh, thing is that you can, at any time, you can go everywhere. So if I'm going into uh, another city, there is no loading and things like that. Everything is seamless because it handles that big universe in a consistent way. There is no, no sheet or things like that. You can really uh, appreciate the point of view wherever you are. It will be the same mechanics. So that was one of the big features uh, we wanted to make sure that we had before showing the game to the public, to everybody, so that we, we wanted to make sure that the technology was working and uh, this big ambitious game was uh, feasible. I'm going, I'm, go back, I'm going back to my spaceship. I want just to show you some gameplay ingredients. I'm going to change a little bit the time so that we have a bit more sun, yeah? So that spaceship is very, very nice. It, it's very close to the Beluga we had in Beyond Good and Evil 1. It can handle very large speed, but it's, it's also very easy to uh, do loopings and uh, trigger very fast movements. So it's a dogfighter. I can increase the speed. So this is a classic uh, plane speed we have on Earth. We are about 1,000 kilometers per hour. But you can increase that speed dramatically, like this, for example. And you will see, so the speed is increasing now. You see that it's about 5,000 kilometers per hour. Let's go back in the city so that we can really understand the speed. And I can increase the speed again. Whoa. Use some tricks, movements. And then we are going to do a looping, for example. So you can combine anything, any movements. And the very nice thing, too, is that you can even increase the speed to 20,000 kilometers per hour, which is a lot. I'm going to try, yeah, to drift like that. So at any time you can, you have the drifting mode, you have the, uh, all these, these very interesting movements. But of course, the, 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 the biggest thing you want to do in this kind of uh, situation is to go in space. So let's figure higher speed. And you see this little effect around the spaceship is because of the friction of the, the atmosphere. If I don't increase my speed, uh, there is no reason to have more friction. But if I'm increasing the speed, you will see that the effect is stronger. And same thing if I'm going very, very fast. So depending on the quantity of uh, atmosphere, you can have a stronger effect. Until you start burning. But you see, with those very high speed, you can really travel very, very far and very fast. Just changing the time of the simulation so that we can appreciate the wonderful view in space. So if I decide to go on this planet or the satellite, which is somewhere around there, I can, I can go there seamlessly. And the more 
uh, the further you are uh, of the planet, the, the faster you can go because there's no more atmosphere, so no more friction. So you see, here you still have a little friction. But of course, you can go back onto the planet whenever you want. A very interesting um, thing too is that there's a lot of biomes on the planet, like this desert or uh, you have frozen lands on the planet, different cities. So we don't want empty uh, planets. We want planets with landmarks, with uh, places to explore. There are mountains uh, where you have some monks living there. So they are not empty uh, repetitive planets. The, the, the planets we aim to, to, to work on, to, disc to, to, to make our, our planets with life. And the planet uh, itself uh, is living somehow. For example, that planet has different, uh, different, I would say, big biomes. Uh, because that planet, as I told you, is a satellite of the bigger one, the one that is in the foreground, a part of that planet is um, protected. Like, you know, like the moon. Our moon is, uh, a part of the moon is protected by Earth. Uh, from the, the big asteroids and uh, meteorites. So here that's exactly the same thing. The cities are built in the safe place where nothing is falling from, uh, from space. But I will show you a bit later the opposite part of that planet where you can have real-time uh, giant meteorites, asteroids falling and modifying the, the planet's ground. Uh, the very interesting thing is that this uh, this kind of event is connected to the life on the planet. So that, uh, yes, you've got those cities on the safe place, but once the big giant meteorites are falling on the other side of the planet, then you have the big companies that are sending the slaves uh, on those very dangerous places. And a lot of slaves are dying, trying to gather um, the meteorites uh, goods, you know, the, uh, the, all the, the things that are falling from, uh, from, the, from space and crashing. They are taking those uh, rare materials uh, and risking their life. So it's not just about the planet on one, on one side and the, the story on the other one. The planet and the story are connected. And um, that, that's a very important thing for us. So again, uh, let's, let's look at that uh, planet modification process. Okay, so now we are back on the, the other side of the planet, the side that is uh, bombarded by meteorites. Here, uh, we just want to showcase the ability that we have in the engine to modify the whole planet in real time. So here, for example, imagine that you're flying over that um, region. You can have a huge meteorite falling in front of you uh, and you will have all these, these one incredible effects uh, on the planet, but also on the other spaceships. So that's a very important feature for Beyond Good and Evil. We want interactivity to be the heart of the whole experience, not just with characters, not just with spaceships, but also with a big, huge planet. So thank you for watching that, uh, that video. This is uh, our first Space Monkey um, debrief. Many more will come, and we would love to have you um, leaving us your comments on this uh, Space Monkey program site. So please comment, tell us what you think and expect way more videos like that. Thank you very much.